You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be recapping Kentucky basketball's victory over the Alabama Crimson Tide. 90-81 to was the final so- score, the season sweep over Nate Oates and company. We're going to talk about the first half, we're going to talk about the second half, and then some overall final thoughts looking over some of the statistics. I've got some interesting thoughts on this game. Uh, Comparing it to an NCAA tournament type of matchup, that'll be later on in the show. But before we do all that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Bet Online. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. First half thoughts here, obviously, uh, Alabama last game in Tuscaloosa, losing to the Wildcats, shot three of 30 from beyond the arc. I guess they made it a point to shoot better in this game than they did last time because they came out hot. Alabama started uh, shooting very, very hot from the floor, five of seven from three before the under 12. Shackelford was making threes. Keon Ellis was making threes. The defense appeared to be somewhat optional uh, early for the Wildcats, giving up both not only the three, but also drives to the basket. There was a lot of drive and kick in this game. Alabama ran some horn stuff. They ran some five-out stuff. Uh, Again, we've talked about Alabama and their style of offensive play. They like to spread you out. They like to shoot a ton of threes. Very high-octane look that Nate Oates likes to give opponents, and it was working early. Unlike last time, Alabama was knocking down just about everything that they put up. It Made it, re- it was really, really hard to guard. At the same time, though, there were some looks that Alabama had that were just open. Um, Kentucky was not putting a ton of pressure on Alabama's guards. And Kentucky was shooting re- very well early, too. Just, just simply wasn't at the blistering pace uh, that Alabama was. It was 17-9 to nine, uh, at the under 16 in Alabama's favor. And that's when I kind of settled in, and I was like, okay... I guess we got a match today. I guess I guess we um, I guess we got a serious game on our hands. Obviously, Kentucky dealing with the injury uh, bug if they, as they have throughout SEC play with Ty Ty Washington obviously being out. Severe Wheeler not uh, active in this game, and then Jacob Toppin apparently had some type of ankle injury. He played and started in this game. Did not seem to affect him. Uh, but apparently he had that injury as well. But not having your starting one and two made Kentucky adjust, and so they played Kellen Grady at the one. They also played Davion Mintz at the one and the two. They played Keon Brooks at the three, Jacob Toppin at the four, and then Oscar Shibwe at the five. So a lot of rotation uh, for the Wildcats with their two starting guards being out. Kentucky adjusted. As I said a minute ago, they scored 90 points. We're going to talk about how they did that. Defense without fouling was very key in this game. Not fouling Alabama on their drives, making sure you grabbed offensive rebounds, though, and then letting them... I feel like Kentucky just kind of let them take some of the threes that they were taking because, as proven in the previous game, they're not going to knock them down as... At a very high rate. I mean, their statistics overall and their their averages reflect that. They're shooting a little bit, I believe, a little bit over thirty percent from three uh, throughout for the entire season, if I'm not mistaken. We talked about how important it was for Shackelford and Javon Quinterly to play better better for Alabama in this game because last time the two guards played awful, had six and seven points respectively for the Crimson Tide. So Shackelford played better in this game. Javon Quinterly didn't, but it was Keon Ellis, the third guard that Alabama has, that picked up the slack. I believe at some point he was six of six from the floor, five of five from three. He finished the game with 28 points, uh, was was the, uh, Alabama's primary scorer in this matchup, and had they not had him uh, shooting just at a ridiculous clip, Uh, This game might have been a little bit more uh, of a blowout. But obviously, right now in the first half, Alabama had just a massive lead on the Wildcats, or what felt like a massive lead because they were just knocking down uh, everything. The Kentucky bench didn't really contribute in this game at all, and it wasn't the bench's fault. It's not like they weren't put out there and they just simply weren't producing. Coach Cal just decided to say, you know what, screw it. I'm I'm down a few players. I'm just going to play my starting five. And he essentially did that. Collins did get... Most of the minutes off the bench, he had four minutes uh, off the bench for the Wildcats. He managed to get six points, most off, most uh, 
most of those points off of uh, free throws. I believe he made, it was 4-4 four four from the free throw line uh, in this game. Really the only legitimate contributor off the bench for the, for the Wildcats. Nobody else really touched the court and did much of anything. Alabama was up 35-24 uh, under nine minutes to play in the first half. Like I mentioned, Keon Ellis, 5-5 five of five from three up until that point. It was really hard to guard all three of Alabama's guards, given how good they were shooting. So it was really difficult to stay in front of Shackelford, Quinterly, and Ellis all at the same time, knowing that they could pull it from 40, or excuse me, from 30 feet. Jeez. Uh, but the, Alabama, just absolutely phenomenal shooting the three ball in the first half. They were 9 of 14 from three under eight. And at one point in the first half, they were 9 of 12 from three. And so sitting there watching the game, you kind of sit there and expect like, okay, Kentucky's still in this. They're not down by a ton. Alabama's not going to shoot like this forever. Or Kentucky's bound to make a comeback most likely in the second half. Well, at one point in the game, Alabama with under six minutes to play was up 41-28. They were 16 of 27 from the field. That's 59.2%. And Coach Cal called a timeout. And then Kentucky started to make their comeback in the first half. Uh, there was a weird period where the officials were trying to figure out if something on Alabama was a flagrant. Somebody pushed Lance Ware, and the officials literally took forever uh, to uh, to get that sorted out, allowed Coach Cal uh, to sit everybody down, kind of get everybody's heads back into the game. Kentucky took advantage. They, they adjusted in that moment, and the shots stopped falling for Alabama. Alabama did not score for the last three minutes and 25 seconds of the first half. And during Kentucky's flurry, they can uh, Kellen Grady and Oscar Sheebway combined for 14 points under four minutes left in the first half. So Alabama was continuing to chuck up threes. They weren't making them. And then Kellen Grady and Oscar Sheebway uh, started to light it up uh, for the Wildcats. And this is probably the most exciting moment in Rupp this season, at least from what I can tell. It, w- it was the uh, three that Kellen Grady made in the corner on the fast break. Uh, to give Kentucky their first lead of the day, 47-46 with 40 seconds left in the first half. It was a 13 to nothing run for Kentucky to end the first half. Alabama was 9 of 22 from 3 in the first half. Again, like I mentioned, they started 9 of 12, and Kentucky was 3 of 5 from 3. Kentucky also took 15 free throws in the first half. Alabama doing a little bit of fouling. I thought the officiating overall was relatively clean. I did not see just about anybody complaining about the officiating in this game. And maybe outside of the fact that they took like 5 or 6 minutes to figure out if something was a flagrant or not. But overall, relatively clean first half from the officials. Kentucky it was able to climb back into it much earlier than I anticipated that they would. Alabama, again, like I mentioned, 9 of 12 at one point. Then they went 0 of 10 uh, to finish the first half from three. And that's what you come to expect from the Crimson Tide. Sometimes they're hit. Sometimes they're missed. Sometimes they play really well against good opponents. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll lose to a team like Missouri. Sometimes they'll beat a team like Gonzaga. It's just simply the way that they're natured. We're going to talk about what happened in the second half and how Kentucky was able to pull away from the Crimson Tide after mounting what was at the time a relatively impressive comeback. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player for performance props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season, and it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage and information. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, continuing along here on the Monday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Daw here with you. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Currently recapping Kentucky basketball's victory over the Alabama Crimson Tide, the season sweep for the Wildcats. All right, second half action here. Early on, it was very apparent. It was very apparent at different times in the first half, but there were a couple buckets that Shebway had early in the first half that were just really impressive that kind of made you realize Shibway's not getting bottled like he did in the first game. Charles Bediaco on the offensive end played well. I believe he also had a couple of blocks, um, but he was not controlling Shibway like he did in Tuscaloosa. And I don't want to say that it's because of officiating, because there was a lot of physical play in Tuscaloosa. There was a lot of physical play in Lexington. I don't want to just mount it up to say, oh, 
Well, there were home whistles on both sides during both of these games. I don't want to say it was just that. I just think that Chibwe did do a better job of controlling himself against Betty Ako and making patient decisions in the paint. And I thought he put up some impressive shots that he knocked down. And also, just talking about the offensive rebounding here for Shibwe, again, we saw this multiple points during this game. If you send more guys to the basket on the offensive glass, Shibwe is going to come down with the rebound. It's crazy how you think, like, four or five more people in the paint, if everybody's coming collectively from both teams, four or five people in the paint, and Shibwe is more likely to grab a rebound. He's more likely to tip it to himself and then grab it. Again, I think that Kentucky really needs to hone in on when they do crash the offensive glass, they don't do it with just Shibwe. They do it with multiple players, and I think we got to see at different points in this game, especially in the second half. It's like Oscar Shibwe is getting his, and Kentucky's sending more guys. Brooks, Keon Brooks Jr., I thought was underrated defensively in this game. Had, had a couple of really nice plays to start the second half. I believe he had a couple of steals, a couple of blocks. Very impressive performance from Keon Brooks. When you, when I, whenever I think about him, I'm so clouded by the thought about his two-point jumper, as he is the king of the two-point jumper, that I don't really think about what else he contributes to this team. Kind of feels like that. Oh, I think we talked about this during the Kansas game. He is kind of that glue guy, plays a little bit of defense, knows how to distribute if he, if he needs to. He's kind of that stretch four, if you will. Underrated defensively in this game, in my opinion. A couple of really nice plays. And then Kentucky had, just overall, some really awesome moments in the second half. I mean, this this game was littered with with what could be classic moments if, the, if, if this was an NCAA tournament game, which it kind of felt like it. You know, Toppin banking in a three uh, was really, really hype. Grady putting Shackelford on the deck and then making a three after an 8 nothing run for Bama. Just an incredibly smooth move, and some might say that it was a foul. If you go back and look, Shackelford flopped. It's probably the hardest flop, one of the hardest flops I've seen this season. And if anything, if a foul were to be called, it should have been a flop warning. Um, and then right after that, after Grady put Shackelford on the deck, splashed a three, Bama turned it over, and it was a run out with Grady throwing up a lob to Brooks. And let me just go ahead and tell you. So I really like, there's some there's some broadcasters that I really respect in the industry. Play-by-play guys. One of my favorites is Ian Eagle for CBS Sports. He did a phenomenal job in this game. He always does a phenomenal job. And there were some moments during this early part of the second half where he had some really good calls. Appreciate Ian Eagle. Really, really awesome stuff. And then some beautiful half-court offense from from Kentucky around the under-16 mark. Whenever they worked into their half-court sets, I mean, there was some really nice stuff that, that Kentucky did. It kind of felt like at different points in the second half, even when the game was tight, Kentucky was trying to let the air out of the ball a little bit. And I don't know if that was by design or if it was Alabama just really trying to get back into the game and playing good defense. But I go back to what I said a few games ago, which was that Kentucky whether it be at home, a neutral side, or occasionally on the road. They've struggled on the road at different points this season. I believe four and three on the road. But they can win different types of games. They can win slower games. They can win faster-paced games. They can win high-scoring games. They can win low-scoring games. They're very, very versatile in what they do, and their half-court offense has progressively gotten better as the season has gone on. Kellen Grady, like I mentioned, starting at the one, playing the two a little bit as well. He was so under control in this game. And I think part of that was the fact that Alabama didn't put a ton of pressure on him. But um, he was just incredibly under under control in the way that he carried himself, the the way he handled the ball. It was awesome to see. So at one point, he made a three, right? Kentucky then got a stop, worked into their half-court stuff. It was late in the shot uh, clock. Toppin threw up just a desperation three, missed it. Offensive board to Shibwe, then it was kicked back out to Mintz. And Mintz swung it over to Kellen Grady on the left wing, and Grady was, uh, right after he had made a three about 45 seconds ago, was looking at Cal, I guess, listening to what Cal had to say or was looking for a new play or something, did not see the ball. So Mintz swung it over to Grady. It bounced off of Grady's leg. Grady then picked it up as an Alabama player tried to dive for the ball. He picked it up and then drained a three. So he just made one. Alabama, Alabama doesn't score, comes back down, get a missed shot, swing it back out. He's looking at Cal. Doesn't even see the ball. It gets to him, and then he and just instinct, put it up, makes it. Absolutely incredible stuff from Kellen Grady in this game. Stepping up whenever Kentucky had some players down. Talking about having some players down. Cal made almost no subs in this game. He essentially left the starters to play for the second half. 
And, I mean, all things considered, it resulted in 90 points. So, I mean, there's not a lot of complaining here to do. If you were to counterpoint the fact that Kentucky scored 90, you could say, yeah, well, Alabama's one of the worst defenses in the SEC. Soft as Charmin at different points. And I would say that's fair. But at the same time, I mean, Kentucky was still down. They're two, they're, they're starting backcourt, and they scored 90 points. I mean, all things considered, I think that's very impressive. Alabama, during the second half, continued to just fog up three after three after three, and it was really helping Kentucky kind of settle in. And then also something else important, on defense without fouling for Kentucky mentioned in the first half, only seven fouls this entire game for the Wildcats. And part of that was because Alabama didn't necessarily put themselves in, in positions where they could get fouled. Like, there, what, there weren't a ton of drives to the lane that were, like, contested or anything like that. Alabama was just chucking up threes and then putting up floaters and stuff like that. There were not a lot of opportunities for Alabama to get fouled uh, in this game. According to Ken Palm, even though Kentucky only picked up seven fouls, it was Kentucky's second worst defensive game of the season. After the first game against Alabama was Kentucky's fourth best defensive uh, game of the season, which is weird. So first time you play them, one of the best games you have on defense all year. Second time you play them at home, it's one of the worst games you've had defensively. And I, I know that the defense without fouling is important, but also you have to be able, be able to guard some people. So it's kind of, there, there's, there's different sides to the fact that Kentucky had only seven fouls, both positive and negative. And I also want to say, just talking about having good defensive games, you know, talking about best offensive games, according to Ken Palm, in terms of efficiency, this was the second best offensive game of the season. And again, like I mentioned a, um, a minute ago, starting backcourt was out. You didn't have Wheeler. You didn't have Ty Ty Washington. You dropped 90 points on Alabama and played incredibly. Even when Alabama was making everything, you still found a way to stay in the game, play your offense, play efficiently, climb back into it. And then at one point, Kentucky in the second half was up by 16, I believe it was with about 10 minutes left. And if this was an NCAA tournament game, I think UK would not have left off the, or let off the gas. I think they would have kept their foot on the pedal and they would have won this game by 15 to 12 points. Um, I, they, they really started to let the ball out for the last five minutes of the game. and They shot some free throws and got out with a win, but I'm still very impressed with the way that Kentucky battled back and then they were able to maintain their lead um, throughout the second half. I believe Alabama at one point, they, they obviously got it, got it down to single digits. Kentucky, like I mentioned, extended it to 16, eventually won by nine. Um... So uh, overall, you know, if this was an NCAA tournament game, I think this is the type of game you would see in the second round. I think this is the type of matchup that you see. If Kentucky's going to be a one or a two seed, that means you're playing a seven, a 10, an eight, or a nine. You're probably matching up with a team like Marquette, Murray State, um, Seton Hall, somebody like that. Offensively, those teams know how to shoot the basketball, or at least a couple of them do. I believe Marquette and Seton Hall do. I'm not sure about Murray State. Um, but this would be that type of game where you have to battle back after after making some adjustments and you put your you put your foot on their throat and and, and you don't look back. And this would be a game that gets you into the sweet 16. This was a this was a round of 32 type of game in my mind. Uh, and Alabama's capable of getting in the NCAA tournament. I don't know where they're seated right now and bracketology would not surprise me if they were actually closer to a 6 or a 7 seed right now given the fact that they're what 7 and 7 in conference play. But a very solid win for Kentucky. I've kind of waffled back and forth on what I thought this team's potential was. But, you know, as we get closer here to the end of the season, we talked about this after the Tennessee loss, if we can get healthy, this team does have national championship potential. But they got to get healthy. Of course, without their starting two guards, they were able to win what I feel like was a round of 32 game comfortably in the second half. If you If you don't let up, such an impressive shooting performance in the first half. He probably cruised in the round of 32. So who knows what this ceiling is when they are hampered by injury. Just have to find out. All right, we're going to talk about some final thoughts here, go over some of the statistics in this game, highlight some of the more impressive performances that we didn't get to. Still haven't got to Oscar Sheebway's numbers yet. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Built Bar. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right, and it's all thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not even really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating Built Bars. And they've got this new thing out called Puffs. Have you tried the Puffs? And if you haven't, 
you're missing out on one of the built best uh, things that Built has p- uh, put out there. It's one of the best tasting bars on the market. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar. They are a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. These things are going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars, including Puffs, are covered in 100% real chocolate, and they've got so many amazing flavors to choose from. And for this month, they've got a new flavor, white chocolate cookies and cream. It's absolutely fantastic. Would really encourage you to try it. They are all delicious, all different flavors that Built has, and new flavors are coming out all the time. If Built thinks a flavor might be good, they will make it. It will be delicious, and it will also be good for you. And right now, you can go to Built.com, and you can use promo code LOCKS15 and get 15% off your order. Again, you can go to Built.com right now using promo code LOCKS15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that's all over at Built.com. All right, wrapping up the Monday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl here with you. If you're listening on podcast, would really encourage you to leave a review. Let me know what you think about the podcast. If you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, would really, really appreciate it if you subscribed, leave a comment, tell me what you thought about this game. I would love to hear your thoughts. I really enjoy interacting with you guys in the YouTube comments. It's always very entertaining. All right, some final thoughts here before we get to my parameters. Just want to go over some of the, the statistics in this game. That were interesting. The first thing I want to note here is so in the first the first match between these two teams, we talked about this in the preview for this game. A lot of turnovers. I believe there was thirty combined turnovers, thirty one combined points off of turnovers. Alabama only had nine turnovers in this game. Kentucky only had seven, and then Alabama got eleven points on, off turnovers, and Kentucky got fourteen. So both teams still capitalized off of the opposing team's turnovers, but they didn't. Neither team really. Had incredibly sloppy play. Overall, I thought it was relatively clean. Good day from the officials. Good day in terms of just pacing and not playing sloppy. Overall, you know, there was a lot of offense in this game. It was really clean. It was relatively clean. I will say, though, Kentucky did shoot 10 more free throws than Alabama. Alabama was 7 of 9 from the free throw line. Kentucky 15 of 19. So that's 78.9% for the Wildcats. They did not get out-rebounded as they have been as of late. 39 rebounds to 32. Kentucky picked up 15 offensive rebounds on the day. 13 assists in this game, and I sat there whenever I first saw saw that number. I thought, well, I wonder why Kentucky was not distributing the basketball considering they scored 90 points. And then you start to think, well, who are the primary distributors for this team? And it's Ty Ty Washington and Severe Wheeler, specifically Wheeler. And when you think about Kentucky's guards that they had to play in this game in Mintz and Grady, they're not necessarily those distributors. So even when they do get extended time, they're not going to be doing what Wheeler and Washington do uh, on a given night. They're just, they're just, they play the game differently. So the assists were not necessarily something that bothered me. Again, only seven fouls, like I mentioned. Seven fouls on Kentucky. Very impressive number there. Would love to, uh, would love to Alabama, hold Alabama to a little bit lower of a shooting total in the first half, but good defense without fouling, I guess. <laughs> Kentucky, uh, all, uh, well, looking at Alabama's three-point percentage, they finished 14 of 40 on the game. So that's 35% from three. So they chucked up 22 in the first half, finished with 40 threes. And this team averages 30 a, a game. So they really came into this game thinking, okay, we're going to shoot much better than we did last game. And we're going to see if we can knock some threes down. We're going to make Kentucky uncomfortable. And I thought that this would be a little bit uh, slower uh, of a paced game. Not a lot of fast break points in this game. We'll get to that in a second. And there were moments where these teams just elected to operate in the half court. They weren't flying up and down the court a ton, or at least it didn't feel like as much as they were in Tuscaloosa. Individual uh, performances here that were really impressive. Keon Brooks Jr. talked about his defense. Incredibly efficient day on offense from Keon. 18 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, was 7 of 12 from the floor, made his only 3, uh, had 2 steals, 2 blocks, like I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Jacob Toppin getting the start for the Wildcats, finished with 13 points, six rebounds, three assists, was five of nine from the floor, one of two from three. Great day from Jacob Toppin. Absolutely love having him come off the bench as one of those bouncy guys. Damian and Collins finished with six points, was the only scorer off the bench. Davion Mintz was, was two of nine from the floor, did not have a good day offensively, finished with seven points, a rebound, two assists. Kellen Grady, a season-high 
25 points, three rebounds, three of six, or three three rebounds, three assists, was seven of nine from downtown, uh, had a steal as well. And then finally, Oscar Shibwe, as he does just about every single game, picked up yet another double-double, 21 points, 14 rebounds, three assists, finished nine of 13 from the floor, had a steal and a block to go along with it. You know, you look at the the numbers there from the starters. I mean, incredibly inflated, but again, all things considered, the starters played all the minutes. Keon Ellis finished with 28 points for Alabama, 7 of 11 from 3. Jaden Shackelford, 18 points, 5 of 15 from the floor. Noah Gurley coming off the bench, 12 points, 5 of 8 from the floor. Uh, Javon Quinterly, who I said needed to play better in this game for Alabama, was 3 of 10 from the floor, finished with 6 points. Alabama kind of got some iffy play uh, from their forwards, Juwan Gary, Charles Bediaco combined for nine total points. Uh, so it was not a great day for Alabama at different departments, but their guards did shoot a relatively high clip. And then looking at my parameters here, so did Kentucky shoot the ball well? Well, they shot 53.2% from the floor and 64% from three. They finished nine of 14. We talked a lot about Alabama's three-point shooting. Kentucky, uh, very efficient from beyond the arc in this game. So yes, absolutely, Kentucky shot the ball well in this game. My second parameter, did Kentucky have decent shot selection? And this kind of goes back to, I've said this kind of sarcastically a few times. I know this is my parameter, but I've been kind of sarcastic about it. It's like, well, if you shoot at that high of a clip, you are doing something right in terms of your shot selection. That's not always the case, but it's typically going to be true. I would say, without Ty Ty Washington, who does have uh, a knack for shooting two-point jumpers. And without Severe Wheeler, um, who has had some questionable shot selection uh, during his time as as a Wildcat, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're a problem on offense. Absolutely not. Um, But they were on the floor to make decisions. Keon Brooks was very efficient at different points in this game with the two-point jumper. And I feel like Kentucky was selective. Uh, in this game with the two-point jumper. And whenever they took them, they were typically wide open. Uh, They weren't rushed. They weren't panicked. I thought the shot selection, the decision-making on offense was very good in this game. So yes, I think Kentucky did have decent shot selection. Did Kentucky play well in transition, both offensively and defensively? Well, the Wildcats had eight points on the fast break, according to CBS, and Alabama only had two. I feel like Kentucky got out and ran a little bit more in this game. I might be wrong. I've already watched the game three times, so I'm... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Kentucky did play a little bit better in transition. Um, but yes, I think Kentucky did uh, hold the Crimson Tide uh, like they did the first game in Tuscaloosa, and they held them again in transition. So yes, Kentucky played well uh, in the transition game. And then final one here, did Kentucky protect the rim? So they, I believe they picked up three blocks in this game, which is way more than I feel like they normally get in SEC play. Normally they come away with like maybe one or none. Um, but uh Alabama finished the game shooting 43.5% from the floor. There were different points in this game where Sheboy did collect some really nice defensive rebounds. Alabama could not get uh, some layups and things to go down. I wouldn't say it necessarily as a fantastic, like an elite day protecting the rim, but they did some good things at different points uh, in this matchup. If you've got any thoughts on the game, again, let me know. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me, or excuse me, you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments, or you can hit me on the socials. I will see all of you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, and God bless.